Hi everybody! Welcome back to our channel where we talk about all things related to power, such as batteries. For today's video, we're going to cover a popular topic for battery users, which is charging, discharging, and cycling batteries. So for many people, using batteries is as simple as charging, using, and then recharging the batteries. But if you want to really maximize your battery's capacity and performance, it's also good to know when to discharge and cycle your batteries. So in this video, we'll go over how to charge and discharge some common battery types, such as lithium-based batteries, nickel metal-based batteries, and steel lead acid batteries. This way, you'll be able to maximize your batteries, whether it's a AA, AAA, or a custom battery pack. So if you find this video helpful and want to see more like it, please like and subscribe. Without much further ado, let's get into it. So let's start with charging. This one's pretty straightforward. You should recharge your batteries as soon as the power is low, regardless of what chemistry it is. So just like how plants need water, batteries need power. Imagine what would happen if you left your plants out and forgot to water them for a few weeks. They'll die. And the same thing will happen to your batteries. So if you leave your batteries out for too long without being recharged, it'll be over discharged and therefore its lifespan will be reduced. So don't leave your low power batteries uncharged for too long. So as for how fast you, you should recharge your batteries, each manufacturer have their own recommendation. So it's best to check with your manufacturer or review the manual that comes with your batteries or battery pack. We do have general recommendation based on chemistry's types, such as if you have a lithium-based battery, you'll want to recharge it at a rate less than 1C. If you have a nickel-based batteries, you want to recharge it between a 0.2C to 0.5C. And if you have a steel lead acid battery, you want to recharge it at a rate of equal to or less than 0.2C. And if you're not sure what C rating is, we do have a video on it up there where we do a deeper dive and also show you how to calculate a C rating. Basically, your C rating is the rate of time it will take to charge or discharge your battery. So charging at 1C for lithium-based battery means the maximum charge current is equal to 1 times its capacity. For example, if you have a battery that's Rated capacity is two amp hours. The maximum charge current will be one times two amp hours, which will give you two amps. For most batteries, you'll see this as 2000 milliamp hours. So you'll wanna convert the milliamp hours into amp hours first by dividing it by a thousand. Another example is if you wanna recharge a steel lead acid battery, the maximum charge current will be equal to 0.2 times its capacity. So let's say you have a 4.5 amp hour steel lead acid battery. The maximum charge current will be 0.2 times 4.5 amp hours, which will give you 0.9 amps. The higher the max C rating, the faster batteries can be recharged. However, we always recommend charging it at a lower C rating, even when the battery has a higher max C rating suggestion. This will help prolong the life of your batteries. So for example, if your manufacturer recommends a 1C charging rate for your battery, you might want to consider recharging it instead at 0.2 or 0.5C. So this will produce less stress on your batteries and help it last much longer. Now let's get into discharging batteries. Which batteries need it and when? Of all the battery types, nickel metal cadmium or NiCad batteries are the ones that require it the most. This is due to them having a memory effect. NiCad batteries need to be fully discharged before charging them up. Otherwise, they might not have its full capacity. If you aren't sure your NICAD battery is fully discharged, you can check it with a voltmeter and see if it's at one volt per cell. Or you can buy a charger with a discharge option and select that discharge option before charging them. For people who use a nickel cadmium battery pack with a manual charger, when you're discharging your batteries, never set the discharge voltage lower than one volt per cell. So for example, if you're discharging your nickel metal cadmium battery pack that has three cells, don't choose something lower than three volts. Otherwise, you'll cause permanent damage to the battery pack instead of maximizing its capacity. Luckily for other types of batteries, including lithium-based batteries, nickel metal hydride-based batteries, or steel lead acid batteries, don't have a memory effect. So you don't need to fully discharge them before charging them in order to maximize their capacity. I also want to add some tips for when you want to store your batteries, since their capacity level will impact their health and how long you can store them. For lithium-based batteries, before storage, you'll either want to charge them if they're near empty, or discharge them if your battery is full to 30% of its capacity, which is about 3.6 volts for LiPo batteries and lithium ion batteries and 3.2 volts for lithium iron phosphate batteries. The reason behind this is that these chemistry have a higher internal resistance when they're at full charge. 
So when you are preparing them for long-term storage, it's recommended to keep them at 30% so that you can keep their internal resistance at a minimum. So unlike lithium-based batteries, when you're storing nickel-based batteries, it's best to charge them up around 80% of their capacity, since these batteries experience a higher self-discharge rate. When you store them at a low power for a long period of time, they may get over-discharged, thus reducing their lifespan. For steel lead acid batteries, due to the high self-discharge rate characteristics, we recommend always charging them back to full after each use or before long-term storage. And remember not to let them discharge more than 50% uh -huh. of its capacity in order to avoid sulfation. Sulfation is the process of lead sulfate crystals building up in the battery cell when the battery experiences overcharging, undercharging, or over-discharging due to being unused for a long period of time. This can have multiple effects on the steel lead acid batteries such as a shorter runtime, longer charge time, and a reduced battery life. So a good rule of thumb is to always try to keep your steel lead acid batteries fully charged. Bonus tip, when you're storing your batteries for long term, besides putting them in a cool dry place around 50 degrees Fahrenheit to 77 degrees Fahrenheit, it's also good to check in on them every month and make sure that their capacity is up to their ideal percentage. For example, if you have a lithium-based battery, it should be around 30%. If you have a nickel-based batteries, it should be around 80% and at 100% for steel lead acid batteries so that you can avoid over-discharging your batteries. Besides knowing when to charge and discharge your batteries, knowing when to cycle them will help prolong their battery's lifespan too. So let's get into that. Cycling a battery is a process where you fully discharge a battery and then fully recharge the battery. One cycle means that the battery has been fully charged and then fully discharged. Two cycle means that the battery has been fully discharged twice and fully charged twice, and then so on. The main benefit of cycling is to help the batteries reach their peak capacity and performance. There are two scenarios where you want to cycle your batteries. The first being when you have a NiCad battery suffering from memory effects. And then the second, when you want to wake up a battery from long-term storage. For NiCad batteries that can experience memory effects when it's not being efficiently discharged or fully recharged because it's been left in storage for too long, You'll want to recharge it at least four to six times so that it can regain its full capacity. So for nickel metal hydride batteries and lithium based batteries, these batteries don't really have a memory effect like NiCad cells do. So for general usages, cycling is not required. Since the benefit of cycling is not really noticeable and you don't really get any capacity increases like you do with NiCad cells. Lastly, for steel lead acid batteries or SLA batteries, we don't recommend intentionally cycling them because to reach their maximum capacity, it actually requires a high amount of cycle, which will actually reduce its lifespan unnecessarily. It's best to let the cycle process happen naturally during your regular usage. Just remember to not let it discharge more than 50% and to always recharge it back to full. Your battery will thank you for this. An important note when you're cycling your batteries is that for each battery chemistry, do not discharge beyond a certain voltage level for each chemistry. So for example, nickel metal hydride and nickel metal cadmium batteries should not be discharged beyond one volt per cell. For light bulbs and lithium ion batteries, do not discharge beyond three volts per cell. And for lithium iron phosphate batteries, do not discharge beyond 2.5 volts per cell. Otherwise, you will damage your batteries. An extra tip when you're cycling your batteries, regardless of what chemistry it is, is to take it slow and be patient. What I mean by that is to charge and discharge your battery at no larger than 0.5C and to give it at least 20 to 30 minutes rest in between each charge cycle. Charging and discharging it too fast without proper rest time can cause more harm than good, such as overheating, reducing the performance and lifespan of your batteries, and potentially causing the catch fire. That's all for our video today. I hope you learned something new and you're able to keep your batteries lasting longer after seeing this video. If you have any questions or video suggestions, please leave them down in the comment section below. If you find this video helpful, please subscribe to learn something new every week.